Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be in the dark room um, putting some textures over a portrait. And uh, the, the idea of this is to shoot textures on film, develop the negatives, and then use the negatives and overlay them over the top of your portrait uh, to kind of create a funky looking texture. So I thought I'm going to try this here. This is just chipboard. And you can see I've got a Nikon F90X sitting here with some Tri-X 400 in. And it's important that when you shoot your textures that you've got an even light over the whole lot. And normally you'd do this outdoors, you know, you can, you can, there's plenty of textures you can find when you're out shooting. Um, you know, brick walls, pavements, any, any kind of uh, rough edges, roads, any surfaces that you think's going to be a good texture. But it's always nice to do it in flat light. Um, it's raining today, so that's why I'm indoors. And I've got this nice big patio door here, throwing bags of light onto, onto my texture. So I've set the camera up at the best exposure on this piece of chipboard. So what I'm going to do is take uh, a few photographs, a couple of stops and a couple of stops over, and then develop the uh, film, develop the take it out of the camera, develop the negative, and then um, see which one's going to be the best to choose for my portrait. So I'm just going to auto-focus in. And it's locked it in. Now I'm going to manual focus. That focus doesn't change. This is a one of a second. This is the normal reading now, fourth of a second. And one fifteenth of a second. Okay, so that's my three shots done. Um, that's all I needed to take was three. I'm going to take the film out of the camera and develop those three negatives. And we'll see what we come up with. Okay, so I'm in a dark room again now. Film's still sitting inside the camera. I'm going to be taking it out in a minute. Um, I've got all my stuff prepared. I've got um, the developing developing tank. This is the real holder at 30, set at uh, 35 mil. That I'll be using in a moment when I take the film out. That's the little spindle thingy inside. I don't even know the name of it. It's a spin. It's a spindle thingy. That's what that is. Um, going to be using rod nail for the development. I like using rod nail. I've I have no problems with this developer whatsoever, and it just keeps for ages and ages. A good little developer. Um, I've got brand new fix that's already sitting there at 20 degrees, and this is my stop at 20 degrees as well. And in here is room temperature, so they won't change. Uh, that's the kettle that I use for my developing. This is the darkroom kettle, and I boil it up, and then it cools down to, to the, whichever temperature I want which is going to be 20 degrees in this case. If it's up or down a little tiny bit, I'll just cool it or warm it. It, you know, it's, uh, it just, by boiling the kettle, I find it just takes all the crap out of the water from the tap. So that's that. And my darkroom thermometer that I'm going to use for the developing. So let's get this film out of the uh, Nikon, get it inside on the reel, get it in the tank, and then we'll do some developing. Okay, so I've got my, um, water at the right temperature now. I've got my stop bath, I've got my fixer and the rod nozzle. This is my line, I know that that's 400 millilitres and all I need to do now, I'm going to be mixing the rod nozzle at um, one, one part rod nozzle to 50 parts water. So there's 400 millilitres in there, so 400 uh, divided by 50 is 8, so I'm going to need 8 millilitres of rod nozzle inside here, so I'll just do that now. And this is the normal way I develop my films, or my negatives, or I should say, or oh, films, yeah. Don't want any air bubbles in it, otherwise that means I'm losing developer. Okay, that's four. One more. Yeah. And that's eight millilitres of rod nozzle. Give it a mix. And the temperature's bang on 20, which is nice. I've got 13 minutes. Every minute I'll be doing five inversions. So I'll only start the timer once I've poured the developer in. And goes the developer. And now I'll start the timer. One, two, three, four, five. Give it a little tap. When you tap it down, it 
just releases any air bubbles that are sitting on top of the film, it just releases them, or you're hoping it releases them. There's plenty of videos on, on YouTube, far better than probably what I'm making on how to develop film, but this is my, my way that I'm developing. So uh, I haven't got a video on my channel, how to develop film, or how I develop film. So I just thought it'd be a good opportunity to, to put one up as well at the same time while I'm making this uh, video. So anyway, I'm keeping my eyes on the clock now. And I'm just about coming up to the next minute. 12 minutes left, five inversions. One, two. So I'm going to speed this video up now because this is going to go on now another 11 minutes. So I'm going to speed this video up. We'll get on with the stop and the fix and then we'll have a look at washing the uh, uh, negative as well. Okay, so that's the development done. Look at that, nasty. This Tri-X really... Um, Gives off some crap, maybe you should wash it before. Look at that. Stop bath, 30 seconds. And just continuously empty that. I put the fixer in. Start the clock and then invert the fixer. Same as I did the film, five inversions every minute. And a fixer, you, you know, you can you can reuse the stop bath and you can reuse the fixer, but the development has got to go. That's like nasty. So the stop bath and the fixer will can be reused and rebottled, and you soon know when it starts getting exhausted. Not so much the stop, but the fix. Um, you know, you you'll take you'll take the film out after five minutes, four minutes, five minutes, whatever, and it hasn't been fixed properly. Just put it straight back in again. And it'll just go longer and longer. But when that happens, generally you know it's time to replace a fixer. Also, it goes yellow and nasty looking colour. And that's it. That's time for the fixer to come out now. And you'll notice that'll be the same colour as it was when it went in. And you're safe to take the lid off now because the film's been fixed. And And just let the um, water trickle in there for about five minutes. So that's been sitting there now for about five minutes. And the last thing I do, I've run out of wash aid. Um, I usually use Tetanol wash aid, but I've run out. So what I'm going to use is a little bit of washing up liquid. Just one little, just that much. And uh, that'll just stop the film from smearing. So I leave it in there to rinse. I don't want to make it bubbly at all. Just want to let it sit on the film and then for another five minutes. And then when I take that out, hopefully it will be smear free. Okay, and here's our film out of the roll. Just undo the spinny thing. Yeah, so leave that to dry now and time to um, wipe all the dark room down and get it ready for printing. So these are the three negatives that I developed. You can see um, this was the overexposed one. This was the uh, correct meter reading shot. And this one was the underexposed one. I decided to go with the underexposed one because that pr provided me better results. Okay, yeah, so these are the test strips that I did. Um, you can see I've got five test strips. Uh, this one was um, a four second split. So uh, for four seconds, with no filters at all was the portrait and then I did another four seconds with the uh, texture negative. This one was two seconds, same way, two seconds split. This particular one here, um, I did five seconds split using the contrast five filter. And then I did this one, which was a three second split using the contrast five filter. So none of these really cut the mustard for me, but um, this one did. Drop me pencil. This one did, and this one is um, five seconds with the contrast five filter with the model, and then two seconds with no filters with the texture. So this is the one that um, I found was 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 the best one to to um, make into a print. So I'll just show you. I want to make a print now, and I'll show you what I was doing with the negatives um, to get this test print. But we'll make a, a five by seven print and see uh, how it looks. 
So basically the first thing I did was uh, I put the negative into the carrier. In she'd go with the contrast 5 filter in, like so, with the contrast 5 filter in, like so, and then project that for 5 seconds, then I would take the, very carefully take the contrast filter out, because I now don't want to jog anything in large or anything like that, take the, swap it with our texture, put our texture negative in, put the texture in, and then do that for another two seconds, then I've got my print. Okay, so I've just uh, done that exactly the same formation in the dark, projected a print, let's put this 5x7 inside the developer, and see the magic happen. Okay, so I've just stopped, fixed and uh, squeegeed off the print, so we'll just place it up on the wall here and have a look at it. So this was the final print that we did, this was the test print that I was happy with, and like I said it was 5 seconds with a contrast 5 filter, and 2 seconds with, with no filter. The 5 seconds was with the portrait, the 2 seconds was with the texture that we made. And that's the final final print that we, uh, that we did. And you know, that could work with a multitude of different um, textures. It just so happens that I had this piece of wood lying around, I thought, well, let's try it out. Yeah, so um, there you go. That's uh, a little dark room session on making textures over portraits. Um, I hope you liked the video and you learned a little bit from it. Um, and every time I make these videos, I do as well. So thanks very much for viewing. Thanks to all the subscribers. And also, um, please don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you already haven't. And it's Christmas, so have a great time, whatever you're doing. Be safe, and I'll see you in the new year. Thanks very much. Cheers. Say bye, George.